Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am so excited for making this video and this video is going to be a little bit different than my previous videos because ever since I said that I like playing games, I received so many questions about what kind of games do I like to play, so I decided to overlay this video with a gameplay and I'm still not sure which one it is going to be, probably Terra or Call of Duty, but you can already see that because the video has been edited. And then as well, I want to ask you guys for suggestions. So what kind of games do you like to play and then which ones I should try? Please write that in the comments. And one thing, one disclaimer, I only said that I like playing games, not that I'm good at it. So uh, for all those of you that are better than me, uh, please be gentle in the comments. <laughs> and then as well, if you like this video and if you would like me to make more videos like this, give it a thumbs up so that I can know. And without further ado, let's start with today's video. So in this video, I want to answer a question that I see very often, and that is about competitive programming. So I really want to share my thoughts about competitive programming. Now, the main reason I think people are interested in competitive programming, besides it being fun, because it is fun, <laughs> uh, but the more important reason is because they are aware that it is going to give them visibility. And it is a great opportunity to be seen by some of the biggest companies out there like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Apple as well, you know. So these type of companies are usually the ones that sponsor these events and then they use that opportunity to look for a talented people on those type of events. And even if you are not recognized there, participating in coding competitions is something that is going to give you a big advantage over other people if you apply for a certain job, for example. Because uh, competing, having experience in competitive programming is something that is going to tell to your future employer that you are someone who knows how to solve complicated problems, but more importantly, that you are someone who is really dedicated and passionate about what you're doing. And that is something that is very desirable for you to have and that is going to give you a great advantage over other people if you apply for a certain job. One of the questions that I get as well is what is the most recommended language to use for competitive programming? And I would say that C++ is definitely going to be the number one choice. It is the most recommended language to use for competitive programming. And um, if you're interested in C++ tutorials, I made a lot of those so you can find those on my channel if you want. They go from the uh, very beginner, absolute beginner level. And then other languages that you can use are going to be Java, Python, Ruby as well. They are all good, but I definitely uh, think that C++ is going to be the number one choice because in competitive programming time, execution time, is very important. It is crucial and since C++ is very close to the hardware, it is going to be very fast to execute. So that is the reason why C++ is number one choice for competitive programming. After that, I would probably say Java, but that's just a personal preference. And then I think as well that Java is going to be a little bit faster than Python. So it is going to be really up to you to decide. Um, as I said, C++ is going to be number one choice, but there is a con to this as well, because C++ is going to be probably the hardest one to learn. But as well, there are a lot of problems in competitive programming where the same code in C++ is going to um, execute within the given time limit, and then that same code in Java or Python is going to fail to do that. So that is one reason to learn C++ as well. And then you have STL, which is Standard Template Library, which is going to be very useful for solving these type of problems. And a quick disclaimer that I want to make, uh, because I see a lot of questions on my channel about STL, is I want to ask you guys, what kind of videos would you like to see on my channel? Please write that in the comments um, down below. And of course, I cannot answer to all your questions. I cannot make all of those videos, but the ones that I can, I will, re I will really try to make those. Now, there are a few misconceptions that I hear very often about competitive programming. And one of them is that you have to be good in competitive programming in order to get a developer job or that you have to be good in competitive programming if you want to be a good developer. And that is really not the case, you know, that is not truth. Um, what happens very often is that in competitive programming, 
you are most of the time focused on solving a particular problem in as little time as possible. And then uh, the problem that you are solving is usually explained very clearly, so it is very clear what you have to do. But in a software developer job, software engineer job, the situation is a little bit different, meaning you usually will not be pressured in terms of time. You very often have enough time to think through that problem and to even try different approaches and different solutions for that problem, but then the problem itself is usually not going to be defined nearly as good as it is in competitive programming. And that is because in competitive programming, all the problems that you are solving already have a well-known solution, the best solution for that problem. Somebody knows that solution, you know, a judge. And then it is going to be up to you if you are smart enough to find that solution yourself. In real life, on the other hand, there are very often problems that don't have the best possible solution and because of that, because there is no the best solution, you will very often have to sacrifice something in order to get something else. And if you know that a solution for your problem already exists, you will just use a library or you will um, copy and paste the code. I mean, I'm sorry for saying that, but that is something that happens in real programming. And I don't, um, I don't copy and paste the code. I mean, um, I, I would never copy and paste the code. Okay, I cannot lie in English. <laughs> But one thing to keep in mind if you are working on a real-life programming project is code maintainability. And that is because the code that you are working on, other people are working on that code as well. So they are adding uh, their features, they are adding new bug fixes to that code, and then you will really have to incorporate your code into an existing application. So if you don't write that code with uh, maintainability in mind, you will find yourself in a big problem very soon. And that project is going to be something that is not going to be maintainable anymore. So you will not be able to add any more features to that application unless you really keep in mind the code maintainability. And then the fact that you are working with other people as well, that has both its pros and then its cons. So very often you can ask for help from other people if you need it and you will get it most of the time. But then you will have to learn to compromise as well. Whereas in competitive programming, it's going to be only you most of the time. And another thing that I would like to mention as well is of a financial nature. So can you earn money as a competitive programmer? And the answer to that question is yes, you can. So you can participate in different competitions and if you rank high enough, you can get money that way. But it is not going to be recommended nor good to rely only on competitive programming as your only stream of income because it is going to be very inconsistent. Whereas if you worked for a company, for example, or you had a regular developer job, you have that consistent salary every single month or every single week, depending on how it is regulated in your country. But as well, if you're very good at competitive programming, you will very often be approached by uh, different companies with offers that are much higher than software developers usually get. So I would say that it is good in those terms. So the conclusion is that I wouldn't rely on competitive programming as my only income stream, but as someone who likes to follow my own dreams, I would advise the same to you. So if you like it, if you enjoy it, um, and if you are good at it, or you think that you can become good at it, I would definitely say um, go for it, you know, because it is the same with my YouTube channel. I do it because I really enjoy it. It is a dream of mine. I don't um, rely on it to sustain me financially. I do have a, a 9 to 5 developer job, which I do every single day. And that is the reason why I cannot publish more videos than I do, even though I would love to, but sometimes life gets in the way. But still, I am very proud to see the type of people that I have on my channel. And I'm very grateful for all the support that I get. And that is really the reason why I love doing this, why I love publishing videos on YouTube. And even though I have a good job now and a YouTube channel which is on an inclined path, um, it wasn't always that way. Uh, I can clearly remember all the problems and all the struggles that I went through. Um, all the days where I was like, oh my god, this is so hard. And all those things that I had to go through in order to, to be where I am right now. 
and that is exactly the reason why I started my YouTube channel so that I can share those experiences with you and that you don't have to go through the same problems and make the same mistakes that I did and it took me three years of university and four years working in the industry after that to finally master the courage to turn on the camera and start doing what I'm doing right now and if I had someone to guide me through this process it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be nearly as long so if I can give you one advice one thing to take with you from this video that would be that every single day that you struggled every single day that you spent trying to learn something and trying to be better at something um, doesn't really matter if it is competitive programming or something else every single day is going to pay off so i hope that this video is going to help to some of you and motivate you and if it does please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well um, you can follow me on my other social media and thanks for watching i'm going to see you in my next video bye